Hi everybody, uh, what I'd like to do with you in this video is explore the behaviors of glaciers <clears throat> using the FET simulator. Uh, the link is located right here, and I've also included the link at the bottom of this video. Um, the website itself says that this might not work on iPads, um, and that leads me to believe that it might struggle on uh, a variety of Mac products. But uh, that's why I'm creating this video, so that in the event that you have a little trouble with it, uh, you can just watch this sort of little you know, walkthrough, and you can figure out uh, how this simulator works and what it uh, shows us. So if I open up that link, and you can see that it's, there it is in the URL box right there. Uh, and uh, what we see right away is, uh, is a glacier, and... Uh, um, we see that, that there's a variety of things that we can observe on, on this, um, this opening screen. One is a toolbox where we can use a variety of tools. I'll show you how to use those. Um, one up, up here is a sort of a long view, a really big view of uh, a sort of a zoomed out uh, vision of the glacier uh, up on a mountain. And then here's a more zoomed in space. And I can move from left to right here, you know, along the mountain. I can also click and drag the little bear and, and just kind of, you know, move that. Um, and uh, down here, I have a variety of different controls uh, that I can um, uh, use to, to control the simulation. I can speed up the, the, the speed of the simulator. Um, I can increase the amount of snowfall. We can see what happens when I increase the snowfall. You can see that the glacier uh, gets a little bigger. Uh, I can also increase or decrease the temperature. If I increase the temperature, oh, you can see what that just did to the glacier. If I drop that temperature a little bit more, right, we can see what that does. Um, I can, uh, let's see, I can, I can, of course, control the units, um, metric, English. Um, if you're ever working with this simulator and, you know, let's say that I, you know, uh, increase, you know, the snow by a whole bunch and I want to just set the glacier, I want to speed it up, boom, just click that where it says set stage, uh, glacier to steady state. And what it will do is it will sort of zoom forward to, Where's that glacier going to be once it sort of quits reacting, uh, once it reaches sort of uh, sort of a stability or sort of an equilibrium? Uh, so as I'm moving along my glaciers, right, I've got my glacier and it's it's running. I've sped up the simulator a little bit, um, and and we see that it's it's flowing, right? We can see it's flowing from from up the mountain to down the mountain, uh, and and this there's a name uh, for this. Uh, uh, kind of glacier. It's called an alpine glacier. Uh, it's called an alpine glacier uh, based on the fact that these were first described um, in the Alps, glaciers found in the Alps, and so it's alpine. Uh, this is distinct from what's called an ice sheet uh, or uh, uh, an ice cap, which is a glacier that just covers an enormous area. This is a glacier that basically flows through a valley, like a, a mountain valley. That's really what this is. This is kind of a cross-section of a valley. And so we can see our glacier is flowing, right? So flow is probably the operative verb here to describe how this glacier moves. Uh, we notice also little particles, little bits of grit and sediment are getting caught up in the glacier. Uh, they're probably getting ground uh, from the bottom, right? This is rock. And so the, as this glacier moves, it's ice, right? So this ice is probably grading uh, uh, and abrading uh, this, uh, this rock and it's plucking up these little pieces and which are sort of scouring it like sandpaper. So there's a few things we notice just by observing even before we really do any real expo exploration. Um, and we can also set what's called the equilibrium line. If I click that, it's sort of interesting. What the heck is this? Well, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, what, what the, what the, uh, equilibrium line is. So one thing that you can do is you can just grab up, you know, your thermometer and you can see that, you know, up here, okay, if I'm, if I kind of jump way over here into the high part of the mountains, we can tell it's quite cold. Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, you know, below, well below freezing. This looks like about eight, nine degrees Fahrenheit. That's very, very cold. Uh, and if we run down here, down to the end of the glacier, we see that it's uh, just a little bit below freezing, so 20, 20 or so degrees Fahrenheit. If we keep moving down, way down to the lower end of this valley, we can see that, oh, it's above freezing. It's actually, um, you know, 37, 5 or 6 degrees Fahrenheit above uh, freezing. Um, and so we notice that uh, the, the temperature varies along our mountain slope, our alpine uh, uh, valley. Um, it, it gets warmer as you go down closer uh, to, to the... Um, you know, low, to, to sea level. So the lower your elevation, the warmer it is. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, we see snow up on mountains for a reason. It's because it's so dang cold up there. Um, and so that's one thing that we notice. The temperature varies. Um, and if I were to, you know, 
take a flag and plant it in my glacier, we can see that you know that flag is going to get dragged along the glacier. Uh, and of course, this is you know a very very fast right. Glaciers don't actually move this quickly. This is a sped up. Um, I can use the, our calipers here to measure uh, the thickness of the glacier at different points, so we can find that near this equilibrium line, it's quite thick. Uh, down here, we see that uh, this this is only 600 some feet. Down here toward this end, right to 200, and finally right near the end, right it's only a a, a few feet. Um, and if we, again, if we jump over here, let's see if we look at that, uh, 879 feet, that's very deep, that's that's very thick. Um, so we can see that glaciers are quite thick. Um, I can also take my little GPS and I can record the distance. So for instance, if I come up here, if I go way up here at the top of my mountain, um, we can see that our GPS says that it's, uh, um, let me see, our elevation is about 15,000 feet, pretty close. And if we jump way down here, use our GPS again, this is only 5,000 feet. So there's a difference of about 10,000 feet all the way down here at the at the uh, uh, mo mo the lower most portion of our Alpine Valley uh, between the top 10,000 feet. And that's not always going to be the case with with every uh, mountain valley. Uh, but it's 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 uh, nice that we can actually kind of get a sense for how is temperature related to uh, the the uh, elevation. Well, the higher you are, right, the colder it is, and then the lower you are way down here, right, it's significantly warmer uh, down at this lower elevation. Um, and, and as we kind of continue, I'm going to put some of these away to kind of clear up, clear things up. Let's put those away. Okay, so we know our glacier is kind of flowing. We know that it gets warmer as you go down farther um, into your, your alpine valley. We know that that equilibrium line is there. Um, let's, let's explore a little bit more about how this glacier is flowing. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sink a borehole. Um, and to do that, this is a little drill. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set it on the glacier. I'm going to click that little button. And it's going to instantaneously shoot a, a hole down into the glacier. Now here, what's interesting about that is that by watching how the the little line, the little uh, a core, the little borehole that we're going to drill, by watching how it moves as it as the glacier moves, we can sort of characterize the flow or the movement of this glacier. So let's try that. I'm going to click a few times. So what we're seeing here is that when the borehole is drilled, it's straight down, right? But as this glacier flows, look how it distorts. Look how it sort of is warped. The the upper end moves very quickly, right? The, the surface is moving really fast, but the stuff on the bottom is kind of getting dragged back. Look how slowly that moves. And so what this implies, is, you know, shooting down that borehole and then looking at the way that the borehole warps over time, this implies that the bottom of the glacier is moving rather slowly. The 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 interface between the ice and the substrate, the stone or the rock, whatever that valley floor is made of, uh, this this part of the glacier is moving very slowly. And that kind of makes sense because it's getting dragged back by friction. Uh, this rock, right, is is impeding, it's slowing down the flow of that glacier. And so if I were to sink a, a borehole, right, the very bottom moves rather slowly, and then the parts on the top are, are cruising, right? They're moving really quickly. And so what we can learn from this is that any place on the glacier that's going to be experiencing a lot of friction, it's probably going to be flowing slower. And that includes the edges, right? The sides of the glacier, which are in contact with the edges of the valley, those are probably going to flow a little bit slower as well. So this is actually a really important tool to characterize the, the flow of the glacier, the way that this glacier behaves. Pretty cool. And it behaves this way anywhere along the glacier, even if I'm way up at the top. See, it's going to do the same thing. That, that lower portion moves very slowly, whereas the top portion is going to be moving very quickly. So no matter where I am on my glacier, if I sink a borehole, that's going to... Um, it's going to behave in the same way. So it really is like flowing, right? And that bottom is getting dragged a little slower than the top is. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about this equilibrium line. This is really interesting. I'm going to show you one last tool. And this is, uh, this is a little meter. And our meter is measuring, um, three units. And there's a little bit of simple math here, uh, that I want us to try to do. And these, these units are called, uh, or these, uh, these measurements are called accumulation and ablation. And the, the ablation is kind of a weird word, but it just means it's kind of like melting. Um, it's melting and um, sublimation. So uh, any any way that ice turns into not ice, right? So vapor or water, we're going to call that ablation in in the case of a glacier. So this little box measures both accumulation and ablation. Accumulation is 
snow that's added, and ablation means snow that's removed by melting or sublimation. And we notice it also rec reports what's called glacial budget. Now, I want you to look at this math. This might be a little bit hard for you to, to read here, so yeah, I'm going to blow it up here for a second. Um, and if I, can I move a little bit? Okay, so unfor unfortunately, I could not get my zoom to work quite properly. Uh, oops, and we can see things are a little goofed up down here, but that's okay. So notice how it's reporting accumulation, ablation, and glacial budget. If we do a little bit of simple math here, let me bring up my calculator. Let's look at the relationship between these two things. So accumulation, this blue figure, 4.843, this is how much snow is being added a year uh, in feet, right? And I, I don't really like that it's in English, but we'll just leave it there. Ablation, 5.438, is the feet per year in which snow is removed. Um, and then we also see this number glacial budget, and it's negative. So let's kind of do a little math here. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and take accumulation, since that's a positive, right? We're adding snow, 4.843. Let's subtract ablation and see what happens. So minus the melting, right? 5.438. And if we do that, this is interesting. We've got negative 0.595, which is pretty much the same figure we see here. It's a little bit lower. Oops, I just moved it. It's about, about there. So um, what's interesting here is that that glacial budget is a number that expresses the relationship between ablation and accumulation. If the glacial budget is negative, that means that the, the glacier at this point is melting faster than the snow is accumulating. The glacial budget is negative. That glacier, just like a bank account, if you're, if you're, uh, if you remove more money than you put in each month, eventually you're going to run out. Well, the same is true of a glacier. If I remove more snow than I add, eventually that glacier is going to, to disappear, which it does. Look, it does actually at the end. Um, our glacier does disappear. That's because it has ablated, right? It has melted over here. And if we look over here, this is interesting. Look how high our ablation is. 12. And our accumulation still remains only at about four and a half. So we can see our glacial budget down here at the very end is really negative. That's a negative seven. That means down here at the end of the glacier, this is called the terminus, um, the glacier is melting very rapidly, but it's not getting very much snow accumulated. And so it disappears, right? Just naturally enough, right? The snow, the, the glacier goes away. Uh, it has a very negative glacial budget. What do you think is going to happen up here, way up at the top of the glacier? This is way up in the mountains. So if I grab my little measuring device here, and we see that our accumulation, 4.911, not that much higher, but the ablation is much lower, 3.633. So let's grab out our calculator again and just see. Uh, accumulation, 4.911. And let's subtract our ablation, 3.633 equals... 1.278, and that's a positive. And look, that's this, just, just about the same number that this reports for the glacial budget. So up here, look at this. Notice that the glacier is growing up here. Do you see how the glacier is actually getting thicker? As we go from the top over this way, it's getting thicker and thicker until you hit that that, accumul that um, equilibrium line. And then it starts shrinking, it gets smaller, until at the end, right, that glacial budget's way more negative than positive. Uh, we have much more ablation than accumulation, so it melts away pretty quickly. Let's look at this equilibrium line. Let's take a quick glance at that. Oh, this is very interesting. So if we look at, at our equilibrium line where that is right there, the accumulation and ablation are about the same. They're actually the same number. And let's see if I can get it to be exactly the same. Uh, that's about as close as I can get it right there. So what this means is that that equilibrium line is the point where the accumulation and ablation are the same. They're the same number. Uh, it's just the ablation is negative. And so our glacial budget right here at the equilibrium line is, is zero, right? It's nothing. That means that the glacier is neither growing nor shrinking right at this point. It's growing up here. It's shrinking down here. But at this point, it's kind of staying the same thickness. Um, and that's because the accumulation and the ablation or the melting are the same. And so this equilibrium line is where your accumulation and your ablation are equal, which means your glacial budget is zero. But now watch this. This is interesting. What if I increase the snowfall? What's that going to do to my my equilibrium line? Well, let's see. If I add a little bit of snowfall, oh look, where that acu that uh, equilibrium line has moved. It has moved over here. So now, if I add snow, that kind of makes sense. That our our glacier is actually going to be uh, have more ice, right, is going to be built up because of that snow. And so our equilibrium line is going to move from left to right because there's more snow being built up over here. So let me steady state, right? So now at that new condition, when I've added snow, what has happened is that the equilibrium line has moved down 
hill, right? It has moved down the valley um, because there's more snow being added here. Whereas if I remove the snow, let's say I decrease snowfall, look at that equilibrium line. It's going to creep its way, way up the mountain, right? And eventually, oh, it goes way up here. Uh, oops, I've made it disappear. Oh, look at that. So this is interesting. Look at this. 